Great Scott! Doc! I'm telling you, this sale is a joke. Doc's only been gone for a few months. Evan Orient automatic retrieval feature is a resounding success. Can you let me in? I've got something to show you. you long enough. Um, there's a lot of stairs. To return the shoe, I mean. I lost it ages ago. You can put it down next to the other one. Hmm, much better. So neat and orderly. Nah, I suppose you'll be wanting some sort of reward now. No, I... All I've got is tea and candy. But... I'm sorry I called you a hooligan. I try not to jump to conclusions, but after all, nine out of ten people in this city are hooligans. It's a fact. Look it up. Uh... Have a seat, Sonny. Hey! You kid! <laughs> Is that Vice Principal Strickland? Mother never could keep little Gerald out of her clothes. Marshall Strickland. My grandfather, gunned down by Mad Dog Tannen over a hundred years ago. That's not how I remember it. Jeez, they all look like they've got sticks up there. What's that? Nothing. Man, she keeps it hot in here. That's the kettle. I'll be right back with some tea. Then don't touch anything. Oh, the candy looks older than I am. Juveniles collide with manure truck. <laughs> nice picture. I can't leave now. Miss Strickland's my only hope of finding Doc. Einstein brought me that shoe from the past. But when in the past? Stop looking at me. Yeah, that's peculiar. The water still hasn't come to a boil. Uh, Miss Strickland? Jack! Diane! I know what you're doing behind that tree! Yes? Doing some stargazing? No, I set my sights on the lower things. Is that? Tim Tannen! Get away from that hubcap before I call your father! Do you remember when you lost your shoe? Shoe? That shoe over there. Oh, that shoe! Huh. Hi, what a nosy Nelly! No one likes a busybody, you know. But... Oh, fine, let me think about it. Uh... Yes, I, I remember. I, I lost it in a scuffle with a, a dog. Oh, when was it? Oh, yes, the day that speakeasy burned down. <laughs> a speakeasy? In Hill Valley? Don't act so surprised, young man. Your generation doesn't hold a copyright on moral depravity, you know. <laughs> Sin has been on the prowl in Hill Valley since the day it was founded. 
Wow, a speakeasy. That must have been wild. Is it true they used to drink gin out of slippers like my grandma said? Don't romanticize the past, young man. Prohibition was a time when gangsters ruled the town while honest citizens quaked in their beds. So where was it? That speakeasy that burnt down, I mean. That was ages ago. If you're looking for bootleg hooch... No, I I'm just curious, that's all. I'm a, a student of history. Student of history? My Aunt Fanny! Yeah, your generation of hooligans and slackers could give two ripe figs about history. Miss Strickland? Oh, video store! Huh? The speakeasy used to be hidden in plain sight down there in the town square. Right where that disgusting videotape rental store squats today. So the video store building must have gone up after the speakeasy burned down. The following year, as I recall. What's with all these newspapers? This is my personal archive. I've got every issue of the Hill Valley Telegraph ever published. Get out. Every single issue? From 1871 to the present. If it happened in Hill Valley, you'll find it in my stacks. I guess somewhere in these stacks there must be an article about the speakeasy burning down. Naturally. I probably wrote it myself. I was quite a reporter back in the day. Any idea what date that article came out? Well, obviously the day after the speakeasy burned down. Don't let me keep you from your business. You there! Don't even think about tossing that Kleenex on the ground! Mind if I take a look? Go ahead, dear. Rebuilt in February 1932. So the fire must have happened before then. But when? I need a date. Don't look at me. I'm far too old for you. Don't touch those. My newspapers are in pristine condition and meticulously organized. Not about to let some street punk get jam all over them. Uh, Miss Strickland, about your tea. Uh, you forgot to turn on you! the... You! It's spelled with a U, you illiterate vandal! The whistle! Surely the water's boiling by now. The polite guest stays out of the host's kitchen, Mr. McFly. Let's see. Ground broken on sight of former speakeasy, singer vanishes. Hill Valley Expo delights crowd, soup kitchen exposed. Here we go. Speakeasy arsonist slain. Legal procedure gave way to old-fashioned vengeance last night when a mob descended on the Hill Valley Police Station. The suspect in the speakeasy arson case, a drifter known as Carl Sagan, was pulled from his... Carl Sagan? It's Doc! Killed by a mob. What's the date? June 14th, 1931. Jeez, I gotta rescue him. Sorry, Miss Strickland. Uh, let me... No! You've gotten my history out of order. Oh, do you know how long it'll take to fix what you've done? Oh, get out, get out, get out! Help! Police! I'm being attacked by hooligans!
Marty, where you been, son? And what are you doing in that getup? It's uh, my uniform. Uh, didn't I tell you? I, uh, I got a job. At the Model T factory? Yeah. Uh, no, no. Never mind. You don't have to explain. I'm sure whatever it is you're up to, you know what you're doing, right? I hope so. Hey, sometimes you gotta go out on a limb for the ones you love, right? Wish my dad had understood that. You won't stay away too long. You'll barely know I was gone. You ready to go, Einstein? I've got to turn on the time circuits first. Time circuits? On. Flux capacitor? Uh, fluxy. Okay, if Doc's gonna get killed on June 14th, 1931, I'll just show up the day before and get him out. I hope you know what you're doing, Doc. Einstein, where'd you go now, boy? Excuse me, young man! Who? Uh, me? You're the only man in the street, and I'm looking for a man in the street reaction. Naturally, you know about the explosion that destroyed this illegal gin establishment. I read about it, yeah. What's your opinion of Carl Sagan, the stranger who single-handedly did what the law has been unable to do for ten long years, namely, rid Hill Valley of the scourge of liquor? Uh... You can mark me down as a supporter, the young man said, flashing a boyish yet virile grin. Hill Valley needs more upstanding youths like yourself. 
Do you have a message for the vicious gangsters who still roam these streets? No doubt plotting to corrupt our citizens with another den of booze, sin, and debauchery. Ask him where I can get the address. Ah, I see! Because you want to blast it to smithereens just like Carl Sagan did. With public-spirited citizens like you around, the lawless element will be on the run in no time. Mr. May I get your name? Yeah, it's... Michael Corleone. Thank you for sharing your candid opinions, Mr. Corleone. Edna Strickland, Hill Valley Herald. I know. I met you back. I mean, I'm familiar with your work. You read my column? How sweet! I know it's just an etiquette column, but I believe it'll lead to bigger and better... Oh! Einstein, no! Down, boy! Is this wretched creature yours? He assaulted me once before. What's got into you? Aggressive dogs must be kept on leash at all times. It's the law. Look it up. Doc, I gotta find Doc. Hmm. Hey, uh, can I get some moose? What does this look like? A hunting lodge? Majestic arms. Transients welcome. I'm not so sure I want to stay in a place that welcomes transients. Wow, looks like they used a real shark. You gonna buy anything? Um, no. Then get out, bum! I guess this is where the speakeasy burned down. How'd Doc ever get mixed up in that? Gail, Zemeckis, and Fine. Attorneys at law. <laughs> no solicitors. How can I help you, sir? Without any money, I don't really have any business in there. Bank of Italy? McFly? Biff? Kid! Grandpa? That's Mr. Tannen to you, Artie. What are you doing out here? Well, I was getting kind of hungry, so I figured I'd come down here for some free soup. Just thought I'd come down for some soup. Think, McFly! The DA's throwing around subpoenas like Babe Ruth. I don't think Ruth's a pitcher anymore. Shut it! If one of those subpoenas landed in the hands of my number cruncher, I'd be in a whole lot of trouble. I could even get sent up the river. You wouldn't want that, would you? Would you? Uh, no, of course not, kid. All right, that's better. What are you looking at, punk? Keep your eyes on the soup, kid. Well? Well, what? Well, what are you still doing here? Sorry, kid. I'll just run back to the safe house. You do that. And McFly? Yes? That hat's too flashy. You better let me hold on to it. Ah. Uh, now scram! You got it, boss. And don't come out until I give you the all clear. I swear, if even one of you mooks could add two plus two without your fingers, I'd dump that wimp into the lake. Hey! Anyway... I'm off to make myself irresistible.
Don't let anyone burn down the shop while I'm gone. <clears throat> okay. Hey, um, uh, never mind. What are those tables for? We keep a few extra tables around for our end-of-the-month hobo soirees. Nice rack. Yeah, we got all kinds of uh, culinary enhancements back there. The kitchen's for management only, rummy. Whoa! I better not talk to him. I don't want to mess up his timeline. Maybe I should go to the jail and talk to Doc before I start dialing random people in 1931. There's no way I'm going to keep that door open without some help. Sisters of Mercy Soup Kitchen. Come for the soup, stay for the salvation. Hill Valley Police Station. Cripes, this place looks old, even for 1931. Who are you and what do you want? Can I talk to, uh, Carl Sagan? Are you his lawyer? Um... No. Then scram. Psst, Doc. <gasps> Marty. Doc. What are you doing here? You sent for me, Doc. I did. When? May fourteenth, nineteen eighty-six. Nineteen eighty. <gasps> the automatic retrieval system. Of course. I'd almost forgotten about that. So what's our plan for getting you out of here? Plan? We don't need a plan. We don't. Not in the slightest. The police picked me up for that speakeasy fire a couple of weeks ago, but the DA hasn't got a case. They're releasing me tomorrow morning. So basically, I traveled 50 years into the past to deliver your car? Sorry about that, but it's so wonderful to see you. We have a lot of catching up to do. Yeah, you, you might want to hold off on that, Doc. Right, Scott! I'm going to be gunned down by gangsters on the steps of the courthouse. Why would they do that? Guess they didn't approve of my burning down their speakeasy. Very funny, Doc. Maybe now we should come up with a plan? A plan? Right. But what? Why don't I take the DeLorean, go back in time before you were arrested, and stop you from getting caught in the first place? Don't even think about it. Without my unjust incarceration, the events that sent you into the past might never happen, resulting in a paradox of continuum shattering proportions. Jeez, we've been back together for five minutes, Doc, and you're already talking about the end of the universe. I've missed that. Don't be ridiculous, Marty. I was only referring to the end of the universe as we know it. Well, I suppose I could just get some dynamite and break you out of jail. No, no, that's far too dangerous. Not just to me, but to random innocent people in the past. The repercussions could be... <gasps> that's it! What's it? My rocket-powered drill. You have a rocket-powered drill? Not yet. I haven't built it yet. You've lost me, Doc. Listen, a few months ago, my 17-year-old self sent in a patent application for a rocket-powered drill. I abandoned the project after I never heard back from the patent office, but the prototype should be nearly complete. Great, I'll just run back to your lab and... No, no, I said nearly complete. You need me to help you finish it. How the hell am I supposed to sneak a half-finished rocket-powered drill into your cell? Not me, me. 1931 me. Wait a minute, Doc. You want me to convince your 1931 self to build a rocket-powered drill to break you out of jail? Precisely. 
Okay, let's say I go along with this crazy idea. Where can I find you? I mean, uh, the other you. How should I know? It was over 50 years ago. Why don't you go over to the soup kitchen next door and give my house a call? They'll know where to find me. Soup kitchen. Got it. Just stay away from the soup. It'll cause irreparable damage to your digestive system. I guess I better get started. Don't worry, Doc. I'll get you out of here in no time. I'm not worried. Once you and my younger self put your heads together, you'll be unstoppable. Psst, Doc! Marty! Have you found my younger self yet? Where have you been all this time? I missed you. I've missed you too, Marty. But I thought it was important to let you live your own life for a while, free from the insanity of time travel. I gotta admit, it was nice to not have my family history blowing up in my face for a few months. Besides, I've been busy raising my own unpredictable teenagers. So how are Clara and the kids? They're fine, fine. Right now we're trying to decide where to send Jules and Vern to college. Clara prefers the 2020s, but I'm partial to the 1960s. We're planning on visiting you and Jennifer in 2011 soon. Me and Jennifer? In 2011? Oh, forget I said anything. Where'd the DeLorean come from? The last time I saw it had been smashed to pieces by a train. It's a fantastic story. Do you remember when the DeLorean got struck by lightning in 1955? Yeah? Unbeknownst to either of us, the lightning produced a temporal duplicate of the time machine. One that was tossed 70 years into the future. What? I found out about it during a trip to 2025 and recovered it just in time to stop Griff Tannen from vandalizing the time stream. Heavy. So that DeLorean... Is for all intents and purposes the exact same machine as the original. Plus or minus little bells and whistles I've added over the years, of course. So, what were you doing in 1931 anyway? Oh, nothing terribly exciting. Indulging in a little personal nostalgia, picking up a few rare out-of-print books to surprise Clara on her birthday, solving a historical mystery or two. The usual. The usual? You lead a pretty unusual life, Doc. It's an unusual universe, Marty. I hate to tell you, Doc, but your last time departed display is on the fritz. It is? So how did you find me? I found one of Edna Strickland's shoes in the DeLorean. How did one of her shoes get in the DeLorean? Einstein took it from her. He did? How strange. I need almost never attacks people. Not without a good reason, anyway. How'd you wind up in jail in 1931, anyway? During my trip to the past, I decided to look into one of Hill Valley's unsolved mysteries. The fire at the speakeasy. Exactly. I thought I was safely hidden across the street. But when the fire started, there was a tremendous explosion, and I was knocked unconscious by a stray brick. When I woke up, I was here in jail, charged with arson. It's horrible. I know. Worse yet, I still don't know who started the fire. Guess who I bumped into at the soup kitchen? My grandfather. No! Don't worry, I didn't talk to him or change his future or anything. Good. I wish I could, though. This era's tannin is treating him like dirt. Don't worry. If history plays out as it's supposed to, he'll soon be out from under Kit Tannen's thumb and free to live out his life as a humble accountant with your grandma. What was her name again? Sylvia. Right, Sylvia. I know this really isn't the right time or place, but I found your notebook. Oh, so that's where I left it. Why'd you bring it here? Because the bank's selling off all your stuff. They can't do that. That's what I keep trying to tell them. Well, you hold on to it for safekeeping. We'll deal with my financial situation in 1986, after we save me from a grisly death in 1931. How do you remember this phone number after 50 years? It's a mnemonic for a dirty punchline I learned when I was 12. Now, get to the soup kitchen and find out where I am. What's the story with this kid Tannen jerk anyway? Biff's father? By this time next year, he'll be pulling down a life sentence in San Quentin. 
that was even a song about Wait, it. if Biff will be born in 1938, and Kid will be in prison... As I recall, he escaped from prison in 1937 for about three hours. That's a busy three hours. No kidding. What do you know about Edna Strickland? Edna? We never really socialized when I was younger. She was a few years older than me, and we traveled in different socioeconomic circles. Why do you ask? She thinks you're a hero for burning down that speakeasy. She's doing a story on you. A story? Oh, yes. Now I remember. Ask Edna. The etiquette column that doubled as a pro-temperance soapbox. She believed that the consumption of alcohol would inevitably lead to a complete societal breakdown. Sounds like a fun gal. You should have seen her when the hippies started showing up in the 60s. She just somehow lost her mind. That would explain a lot. Hang in there, Doc. Not the best choice of words, Marty. Don't touch those! These are very sensitive legal documents. Nobody is supposed to handle them but sworn officers of the court. Papa, I, I mean, Judge Brown says so. What the hell is that? Hey! What'd you do? 